Good morning. Today we're looking at section 5.3 elasticity out of business calculus with Excel. When we look at it, we probably should refer to it as the longer name elasticity of demand because including demand lets you know which should be the denominator and which should be the numerator. We can think of this as a special case of relative differentiation that we're looking at rates of change but we want not the absolute rate of change, but the relative rate of change. So that if I'm talking about change in price and demand, if I tell you that I've raised the price by a dollar and lost 20 customers, ask, is a dollar a lot and is 20 a lot? It depends on what I'm selling. If I'm selling loaves of bread, raising the price by a dollar is a whole lot. If I'm selling luxury cars, raising the price by a dollar isn't very much. Again, if I'm selling loaves of bread, losing 20 loaves of bread in my weekly sales of 20,000 isn't a lot. If I'm selling luxury cars or selling expensive homes, losing 20 sales is a whole lot. And so when we look at, if I change the demand price, should I raise or lower it to increase it? I wanna know not what's the change in price and the change in revenue, but the relative change in price and the relative change in revenue. The definition of elasticity, when you look at it, always includes a negative. That's because the demand function always has a negative slope. And we like to talk about elasticity as a positive number. So we're going to throw a negative sign in there. The easier version to understand initially is arc elasticity between two points. So if it's the percent change in quantity over the percent change in price, quantity two minus quantity one over quantity two plus quantity one divided by two, do the same kind of construction with price for percent change in price. Then I do some algebra. I'm going to flip and multiply when I divide and I find I have divided twos that cancel out. And so this gives the easier form for arc elasticity. I can do the same thing with elasticity at a point for a continuous function. I look at the derivative divided by the size and the derivative of price divided by the size. I'd like to get rid of this ugly, complicated fraction. And so I'm going to flip and multiply of the derivative of quantity with respect to price times price divided by quantity at a fixed point. Notice that we have been doing derivative of price with respect to quantity, here we're flipping it over. I can use elasticity to approximate percent change in revenue. Revenue is quantity times price. So if I take revenue times one plus the change in revenue, that's gonna be quantity times one plus the change in quantity times price times one plus the change in price. And this is basically going to be the, um, percent change in quantity, it, I mean, percent change in revenue is going to be one minus E times percent change in price. As is normal practice, I'm going to follow the structure of the text, but not do the same examples because you can read those examples out of the text. It's useful to start with a visualization. And so my visualization, I have a demand function and some price point, price and quantity that I'm going to start at. And I'd like to know, should I raise or lower the price? If I raise or lower the price, I'll lower or raise the quantity. What gives me the better profit? The place to start, I'm going to produce a revenue function and see that the revenue function looks like a parabola. When I move back and forth, I can see right around there is going to be the maximum revenue, but I'd like to know that without producing a revenue function. And so what I'm going to do is say, algebraically, the revenue is going to be price times quantity. And so it's the area of rectangles. I want to zoom in to see this better. And we can see easily that these revenues are about the same, but if I look at that's going to give me a lower revenue. That's going to give me a lower revenue. 
And again, there's a maximum revenue right around nine. And I'd like to know that without having to compute at every value. And so I'm going to look at the two values and say, I'd like to know what happens. Well, I see if I slide down, the quantity is increasing faster than the price. And so I wanna know, should I increase or decrease price to, to increase revenue? I'm not worried about whether it'll increase quantity, but increase price. But we see this is an extra rectangle here, and I've lost this rectangle and gained that rectangle, and the gained rectangle is bigger. But what I'd like to do is change my units. If P naught is my starting point, I want to say this is one, and this area, this height here is one. And so I'd like to change my view again and have my quantities be in the base price and the base quantity. The advantage of doing that, by looking at this, I can see what I'm really interested in is what's the slope of the demand price line. If the slope is flat, if the slope is less than one, then increasing quantity by decreasing price, I gain more than I lose. If the slope were in the other direction, the amount I gain is offset. And so if it's a steep slope, if the elasticity, uh -uh, that was elasticity one. If I go further, I'm going to get it so that I should, if it's inelastic, I should raise the price. And so I'm going to talk about dividing by the, the quantity, the base quantity in each case. And then it's simply a matter of saying, there's the slope of the line and my elasticity is the negative reciprocal of the slope of the line. If I'm over here beyond the optimal point, I should, raise my price and lower the quantity, where if I'm back here, I'm going to want to lower the price to gain market share. And if I do it in terms of not derivatives, but relative derivatives, I simply have to say, is that greater than or less than one? Now we'd like to look at an example. I'm going to use the same example I used in the GeoGebra visualization. And so, I'm going to look at the price of Q is six minus Q over three. And as we did with the theoretical part, it'll be easier to start with the arc elasticity, which is E equals minus the change in quantity over the change in price times the sum of the price divided by the sum of the quantity. And the reason we've picked this particular function is it has lots of easy to compute points. So as we compute elasticity, we can compare the results to things that we can easily work out. So I'm going to look at quantity price and revenue. And I'm going to pick easy numbers to work with. So I'm going to start with, if the quantity is three, six, nine, 12, or 15, the price, it's easy to compute, will be five, four, three, two, and one. And the revenue will be 15, 24, 27, 24, and 15. And I'd like to look at the elasticity as I go from one point to the next. And so my elasticity between three and six minus the change in quantity is three, the change in price is minus one. The sum of the quantities is, sum, sum of the prices is nine, sum of the quantities is nine. And so this gives me three, which is greater than one. 
elastic. And I want the price to go down. And so the lower price gives me the higher revenue. If I look at the next one, I again have minus three, minus quantity three over minus one, but now the sum of the prices is seven and the sum of the quantities is 15. This becomes seven over five, which is again greater than one. I wanna do the lower price if I drop my price from four to three, my revenue goes up as I gain market share. Again, minus three over minus one. The sum of the prices is five. The sum of the quantities is 21. I'm going to get five over seven, which is less than one. This is inelastic. I want the price to go up now. So I'd rather price it at three, sell fewer, but make more money. One more case, minus three over minus one. The sum of the prices is three. The sum of the quantities is 27. This gives me one third, which is less than one. It's inelastic. I want the higher price. Now this works not only if I do just consecutive things, but if I said I can either price it at four or one, well, we see I'd make more revenue at four. And so let's see what happens when we do the quantities. The change in, there's a minus sign. The change in quantity is plus six. The change in price is minus three. The sum of the prices is five. The sum of the quantities is 21. I'm going to get 10 over 21, which is less than one, which is inelastic. And so I want the higher price. And so in this case where we can just compute the price and compute the revenue, it's easiest to simply compute the numbers and take the biggest one. But this shows the method that works. And the method works even if I just have things at a couple of points. And I can do that without computing revenue in those cases. So once again, we're looking at the, the formula for price is price of quantity is six minus quantity of three. I want to look at R elasticity. And the formula for that is elasticity is minus the derivative of quantity with respect to price times the price at a particular point at our point divided by the quantity at that point. If I look at my function, my derivative of price with respect to quantity, that's the old fashioned derivative we've been doing before, is minus one third. So the derivative of quantity with respect to price, I can do related rates or simply realize that these are inverses of each other, is minus three. And so my elasticity in this case is going to be minus minus three times P naught over Q naught which equals three P naught over Q naught. Now let's look at points. And I remember that I have the point, if Q equals nine, the price will equal three. And the elasticity is three times three over nine, which is one. And so that's going to be a stable point. If I pick a point, where my price is higher. And so if my price is five, that corresponds to my quantity being three. And then the elasticity is three times 
five over three, which is five, that's greater than one. And since it's elastic, I want to lower price. On the other hand, if I pick a point like Q equals 15, and my price is one, then my elasticity is three times one over 15, which is one fifth, which is less than one, I want to raise the price. And so what we're looking at is we look at relative derivatives, to the side action. And this is elasticity. Thank you. <laughs>